Hello fellow Dragonborn and welcome to the Unique Equipment Guide for Dawn Guard, an expansion for the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Some equipment on this list will not be unique, but more rare which will be indicated by yours truly. I will be listing these off by progression to the best of my ability, and with the help of the wiki, showing you what these pieces of equipment can do, where to find them, and the requirements to do so. Those with a quest required will be marked with a star. So let's get started. These first items are found outside of the Dawnguard storyline, and we're beginning with Zephyr. By appearance and damage, it's just a dwarven bow. What makes this bow special is its 30% faster draw speed. Zephyr is found in Arkingthums, southeast of the orcish stronghold Dushnik Yal. If you have read the Aetherium Wars, or once you enter this dwarven ruin, you will begin the quest Lost to the Ages, and be haunted by the ghost of Katria. Exploring this highly unstable ruin, a fair distance, Katria will point out where she died and where she fell. Up high, in a small clearing, at the gap that she fell from, you will see Zephyr on an overhanging log. If you choose to continue helping Katria, the end result is quite rewarding, letting you construct one of three advanced pieces of dwarven technology, being the ethereal crown, shield, or staff. The crown is an ornate circlet that allows you to retain the last standing stone ability you had, ultimately letting you have two standing stone effects at a time. Being it's not a piece of armor, you will not get full armor benefits with this though. The staff will let the wielder summon a dwarven spider, or sphere guardian, for 60 seconds, and sometimes it will summon nothing except dwarven scrap metal. The third option is the ethereal shield. Using a standard bash with the shield will make enemies ethereal and cause them to flee for 15 seconds. But remember, you only have enough ethereum to construct one of these. Find the rest of the ethereum shards, and your last destination will be the ruins of Bethalft, which is south-southeast of Iverstead. And behold the almost climactic ending to this quest. Joining the Dawn Guard, you get access to interesting gear, one of which is the crossbow, specifically the enhanced dwarven crossbow. It is not unique, but here's why it's worth mentioning. While it is an ordeal to get the schematics for this, the high base damage of 22, combined with ignoring half the enemy's armor, not to mention you can enchant crossbows, makes the enhanced dwarven crossbow the most powerful archery weapon in the game. So here's how you can get it. When you are introduced to the Dawn Guard, and Isran has you retrieve Serene Gerard, you can help her in finding ancient dwemer schematics, through the Ancient Technology Radiant Quest. The sixth time you do this, you will be retrieving the schematic for the Enhanced Dwarven Crossbow, and not only will she sell it to you, she will teach you how to make it yourself. Of course this will not be available to you if you side with the Volkar Vampires. As if you need more reason to join the Dawn Guard, here's three more. These relics you can obtain during another Radiant Quest. One of them is the Dawn Guard Rune Axe. It has a fair base damage of 11, and seems to have a bit of a glow. Its glow being from the cumulative enchantment dealing more and more sun damage for each undead slain with it, up to a maximum of 100 extra sun damage. Another relic you can get is the Dawnguard Rune Shield. This has a base armor of 27, does 10 additional bash damage to vampires, and a sustained block creates a minor sun shield that deals 10 damage per second while draining the wielder's stamina. The third relic in this set is the Dawnguard Rune Hammer. It has a base damage of 22 but doesn't do any additional damage to vampires. However, bash attacks with this warhammer will create a fire rune that deals 50 damage when enemies come in contact with it. The damage and range of placement are also affected with destruction related perks. As stated, these come from a radiant quest. Later on in helping the Dawnguard, you were sent off to recruit Florentius, a priest of Arche. Once he is at Fort Dawnguard, you could begin doing the Lost Relic quests for him. But being their Radiant quests, not only will the locations be random, but what quests you get with the Dawnguard as well. So it may be time consuming to get all three, but for collective purposes, this is definitely worth it. Serana, Valerica, and Lord Harkon are each wearing Vampire Royal Armor, and a possible three can be obtained. It is a light armor Curus that provides 30 base armor and increases magicka regeneration by 125%. Continuing onward through the main quest line, Serana will guide you to the Castle Volkahar Courtyard to learn what became of her mother during Chasing Echoes. It is at this point that you won't have to steal or kill to get the Vampire Royal Armor. Take the secret passage from the courtyard to the room with many gargoyles in it, and you will find this armor in the corner on a set of shelves. For the other two, you must use a complicated pickpocket method on Serana and reach the end of the main quest in the favor of the Dawnguard, so this one is by far the easiest to get. Another rare form of craftable equipment is the Shellbug Helmet, a piece of heavy armor with a base rating of 24. If you have the perk, it will give the full set bonus when worn with Falmer armor. To craft it, you will need Shellbug Chitin, and there is only two Shellbugs in existence. When you reach the Forgotten Vale, one of these Shellbugs is located in a hidden chamber in Forgotten Vale Cave. The other is in Sharp Slope Cave, near the large Falmer camp. The third unique shield is Ariel's Shield, that has a base armor of 32. Its special effect is to store up the energy from blocked attacks, which can be unleashed upon your enemies with a power bash. 
The level 1 charge from 5 hits will give the enemy a short stagger. The level 2 charge from 10 hits will create a more powerful stagger effect. And the level 3 charge from 15 hits blocked will topple the enemies in front of you. Ariel's shield is found on a Falmer in the Forgotten Vale Forest. A sublocation of the Forgotten Vale that is accessed by placing the Ruby Paragon into the Paragon platform near one of the first waterfalls. The Ruby Paragon is on a Frost Giant in Ariel's Temple. Then you need only travel to the Forgotten Vale Forest and slay the Falmer Warmonger wielding the shield. The last armor on this list is the Ancient Falmer Armor, a set of off-white light armor that appears to be a mixture of ebony and elven design. The Ancient Falmer Curious gives a base armor of 38, whereas the gloves and boots give 20 base armor. This is acquired after you defeat Arch Curate Verther in Ariel's Temple within the Forgotten Vale. This is during the main Dawn Guard quest Touching the Sky. After defeating Arch Curate Verther, you also gain what you came for in the first place, and that is Ariel's Bow. A bow quite unlike any other. It has a base damage of 13 and carries an enchantment that deals 20 points of sun damage, and undead targets take triple of that. The reason this bow is sought after by Harkon is its ability to blot out the sun. To do that, you must first get some blood-cursed elven arrows by giving some regular elven arrows to Serana. Fire one of these at the sun with Ariel's bow, and it will be eternally dark for the next day or so, giving the same benefits as being knight if you chose the vampire's path. Alternatively, taking some elven arrows to Night Paladin Gelibor will give you sun-hallowed elven arrows. Firing one of these at the sun will create a glorious sunburst, followed by numerous pillars of light that cause sun damage to all enemies and allies in the area, similar to what the Stormcall Shout does. The last item on this list is Harkon's Sword, which looks a lot like an Akaviri blade, but with a sinister twist. Even though its base damage of 8 is lower than most one-handed swords, on strike its one-of-a-kind enchantment will absorb 15 points of health, magicka, and stamina if it is wielded by a vampire. There's always a catch. Harkon's sword is gained during the quest Kindred Judgment, in the final moments of the Dawnguard questline in Castle Volkahar. So what side did you choose? That's it for this guide, fellow Dragonborn. If you feel like there's any items or details I missed, the best way to correct me is by commenting what it is, and more importantly, where to find it. Not just to help me out, but your fellow Dragonborn too. If this guide was helpful to you and you enjoyed it, do whatever you see fit to show your appreciation. And if you'd like more guides like this, you know what to do. Thank you so much for watching. This is Cato Genesis, and your next adventure awaits.